Greetings, respected viewers. I am George from Ireland, and this video is about the centenary of the Jallianwala Bag massacre. So it is exactly 100 years ago that it occurred, the 13th of April, 1919. Uh, surely the most notorious episode um, during the British Raj. And I realize this uh, Amritsar massacre is a very sensitive issue in India. So <clears throat> what happened? There's not much uh, dispute about what actually occurred. Um, there's some debate about the interpretation of what should be done about it now. So in 1919, there was considerable unrest in India. The uh, First World War was not quite over. There had been an armistice signed in November 1918, um, and the Treaty of Versailles wasn't signed until June 1919. So officially, the war was actually still on, and some of the wartime uh, legislation still applied, like internally without trial and so on. The British Raj was worried about disturbances in India, and thought that perhaps some of this would have to be extended into peacetime. And so there were large-scale protests uh, against that, um, the Black Acts uh, that Rowlett Act, um, because uh, Mr. Rowlett was the man behind it. It was called Black, as in people were denouncing it. Many Indians thought it was unfair <clears throat> that it was depriving them of their civil liberty. So there were huge-scale demonstrations in Amritsar and other cities in the Punjab, uh, and then there had been rioting, um, there had been a lot of arson, so many public buildings had been burnt down, and uh, five uh, Britishers had been uh, killed the day before in Amritsar. Now, some of this is cited um, in, uh, to suggest that what Brigadier Dyer did was acceptable, which obviously it wasn't. It was clearly, it was grossly disproportionate. Um, anyway, he had um, banned meetings in the town. Uh, anyway, then um, on the 30th of April, Brigadier General Edward Reginald Harry Dyer uh, marched out of his barracks with 90 soldiers, uh, all of them Indian. Well, what would then have been regarded as Indian, except for the Gurkhas, who are Nepali. So, um, Baluchis, as in from what's now Pakistan, Sikhs, uh, Rajputs, um, and uh, the Sydney Rifles. Well, they're also from what's now Pakistan. So, uh, the three major religions of India were represented there. Now, some people watching this won't know much about India. It won't only be Indians who are watching this. And in case you don't know, uh, Amritsar is in the Punjab. Um, it's the holy city of Sikhism. And so these days, it's got a Sikh majority. It would have been rather more mixed in those days, in, in 1919. So um, there was a crowd of about 20,000, and Dyer had hugely underestimated how many people were going to be there. He had 90 troops, some of whom uh, didn't have rifles. So he appears uh, to have panicked. He should have beat a hasty retreat, but he thought we could easily be um, uh, surrounded. They could encroach on us, come closer and closer and closer, and not doing anything to warrant opening fire. Now, there were, there were mostly young men in the crowd. Yes, there were some women and children as well. None of them had any firearms. Some of them had lattes, which is a, a long stick. A few of them had cans of petrol because they've been burning uh, public buildings. So, um, Dyer... Uh, didn't get out of there in time and decided, well, I'm going to have to open fire because they'll come too close, they'll start attacking us, whatever, with sticks, with rocks, grabbing our rifles, or, and then even though we've got rifles and they don't, we're so outnumbered, that'll be it. Unarmed people can and do attack, attack armed troops. But anyway, he acted too hastily. This could have been resolved without a single person being killed. Um, and uh, he ordered his uh, troops to uh, open fire uh, without warning, and this enclosed... Um, the public space, so there was no easy escape for them. He blocked off the egress from this uh, public garden. That's what bug means, a garden. It's Jallianwala bug. And uh, his troops fired for uh, 10 minutes, almost exhausting their ammunition. And uh, the official death toll was 375. Congress party estimated it at around 1,000. So Dyer's troops fired 1,650 uh, bullets. And uh, many more people were wounded, sometimes not by bullets, but by the stampede. People were trying to get out there, out of there. Some people were crushed, as in died of asphyxia. So uh, it was horrific, a horrific atrocity. Now, obviously, soldiers lawfully hold uh, firearms. They are allowed to open fire sometimes. They are allowed to kill people, but only under certain circumstances. Not to be killing unarmed people. Not when you believe these people don't... Uh, uh, present a danger to you. At the Commission of Inquiry, Dyer was asked, um, 
did any of the people in the crowd have guns? He said, no, none. Did any of them um, attack you? He said, no, they didn't. Um, so you can't fault him for honesty. He was telling the truth about that. And he didn't seem to be uh, suffering even a twinge of guilt. There was not a pang of remorse out of um, Dyer. Anyway, he was rebuked by the official uh, commission um, of inquiry, Hunter, and uh, he was uh, forced to resign and retire. But this was a very, very mild uh, penalty considering, um, because if you uh, kill someone, not believing that person presents any threat to you, and it's not a judicial execution, surely that's murder. Most of these people were unarmed and hadn't done anything against his troops. All right, they were in an illegal demonstration, but killing someone for being at an unlawful gathering is way over the top. The death penalty did exist in India, still exists in India, but only for the gravest of crimes, only after somebody's been found guilty after a fair trial, had a chance to appeal and all that. Um, so Churchill, although he wasn't a prime minister at the time, he said it was monstrous. He was denounced by uh, some people in the United Kingdom, but obviously the, the denunciation was not wide enough and was not uh, vociferous enough. So there were some mealy-mouthed criticisms of what happened and uh, a fulsome denunciation of what was happening, of what had happened, was surely required. Dyer ought to have been uh, put on trial because, yes, army officers are entitled to command their troops. They can give orders to open fire and so on. But if they kill civilians on purpose, huge numbers of civilians, when it's not a military operation, this is not collateral damage. We're firing at a building where enemy troops are and there's some civilians in there who get killed as a, as a byproduct of that. No, no, no. This was um, deliberately killing a huge number of civilians. So too many people have equivocated about this or pleaded the riots in mitigation um, and so on. And uh, Dyer, he really uh, had responded with an iron hand and overreacted to what had happened. A white woman had beat, been beaten up in Amritsar some days before and he required any Indian who walked along that street to crawl along it, saying they must salam Europeans, as in greet them very respect, respectfully. So uh, he really was uh, detestable and... Um, it's perhaps more shocking given that Dyer had uh, grown up in India, been uh, born in Murray, well, that's what's now Pakistan. Uh, he'd gone to school in Ireland. I'm not sure if he actually was Irish, to Middleton College in Ireland. Um, and um, he'd actually never set foot in England until he was about 18. Uh, anyway, so uh, it's astonishing to read that um, some Sikh clergy invited him to Hari Mandir. That's the Golden Temple. That's the Holy of Holies of Sikhism because some people watching this won't know anything about that. And he uh, underwent a ceremony where he was invested as an honorary Sikh. Now, considering he'd killed so many people in Sikhism's most holy city, it's staggering that this occurred. When I first read it, I didn't believe it. And then I had it confirmed by um, other sources. But it's something that I think a lot of, lot of Sikhs would not like to remember today. So a retirement fund was open for him and some Britons in India donated lots of money so he would enjoy a luxurious retirement. It's sickening considering how many civilians he'd killed, presenting with a sword, reading Hero of the Hour, Saviour of the Punjab. So it's a truly scandalous episode. Later, Nehru was on a train and happened to be sharing a carriage with Dyer, and he overheard Dyer saying he um, had intended to wreak even more destruction, but he took pity on the town, and that's why he was so clement. Um, which, again, is jaw-dropping. So he moved to England and retired there. He died in an accident about eight years later, falling off a ladder or something. And the other person who's often blamed for this was, is Sir Michael O'Dwyer. I blush to mention he's also Irish. So um, Sir Michael was governor of the Punjab. Now, he wasn't a present at the massacre. He didn't um, order it to take place. But when he heard about it, he publicly spoke up for what... Um, uh, um, Dyer had done. He said that Dyer's actions were vindicated since the unrest immediately ceased in the Punjab. I suppose people were just so petrified because Dyer had shown that he was willing to shoot unarmed people dead by the hundred. Now, um, Sir Michael uh, later retired, returned to the British Isles, and uh, famously uh, he was tracked down and assassinated in London by Udham Singh over 20 years later as um, O'Dwyer was about to address the Central um, Asiatic Society at Caxton Hall. I made a video of that. Incidentally, um, uh, what else was I going to say about um, O'Dwyer? So he was Irish, but he lived in England towards the um, end of his life. Uh, so this is an issue that still separates a century later. The Amritsar massacre 
and there'll be commemorations um, of this uh, in India today. Uh, it was a crime, surely. Uh, it was an atrocity, um, killing hundreds of civilians on purpose. It was no accident. Now, I know it wasn't ordered by some higher authority, not by the king emperor, not by the prime minister, but still, a senior military officer had ordered this to happen, and he wasn't punished for it. I mean, having to retire is not a proper punishment. So I don't know whether the British High Commissioner or any dignitaries will be there to um, uh, express their condolences to the descendants um, of the victims of this massacre. David Cameron, when he was Prime Minister, he visited Amritsar several years ago and wrote something in the Book of Condolence um, expressing his horror at this um, a tragic event. And of course, it wasn't simply a mistake. Someone did it deliberately. Dyer knew what he was doing. So um, there is a spirited debate as to whether an apology ought to be forthcoming. Would it bring closure? Would it improve relations between the two nations? Uh, and if responsibility is accepted by the United Kingdom today, um, does that mean that the United Kingdom ought to pay compensation to uh, those who were slain in the massacre and indeed to those who survived? Some of them, some people who were there sustained injuries um, from which they suffered for the rest of their lives. Uh, so there we are. Um, well, one of the few positive things I can say about the UK's reaction, even at the time, is there was no denialism. Nobody disputed that this took place, nor indeed that they make bogus accusations saying, oh, well, um, some people in the crowd had weapons that tried to attack the troops. There was no lying about it, at least. Um, so that is the Jallianwala Bag massacre. Uh, ironically, Dyer probably did more to terminate the British Raj than the Congress party, because uh, up until this time, a lot of Indians had had faith in uh, the British Raj, thought that the um, imperial rulers would uh, rule decently, but obviously their, their faith in the authorities was very badly shaken um, by uh, this massacre, that a crime on such a scale could occur and that the perpetrator could get away with it, that uh, um, the system was unjust. Uh, and obviously, Congress was incensed by this uh, horrific massacre. So that's all on the Jallianwala Bag massacre, something which is well, regrettable doesn't even uh, begin to express how horrific it was.